And we're live, and over to Hannah with a very nice drink. Yeah. Wow. And just made me this though. Cheers. Excellent. Remember so. to remember to like, share, and subscribe, everyone. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I yes. Know I know what your yes. saying is going. Yeah. yeah and so another thing is Blake Seven, absolutely fantastic series. Blake Seven, Red Dwarf, hilarious series. I don't know if Hannah's seen it. Ludwig von Mises, Peter Schiff. Hannah might not agree as much with them, but agree with these two. <laughs> she will. Yeah. Right. Um. So now we're talking about uh, the role function of mm -hmm. the role function of TE in the ENFJ. I'll now go over, because we've, we've got an hour for this, folks, so hopefully, SE Polar, so hopefully I don't get too pressurised. Uh, right, so, but I've done quite a few of these now, so I should, uh, and I have once done the whole model in an hour. That's... Um, <laughs> right, so I'll, I'll, I'll be a little bit cheeky. Do you want to explain externalities, internalities? No. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Right, okay, so ENFJ, the extroverted functions are directed outwards towards society. In Dario's book, he mentioned that uh, extroverts generally uh, report uh, comfort with all of their extroverted functions, mm -hmm. um, and introverts with their introverted functions. Um, so uh, they're directed towards society. The top row is directed towards society. Right. Uh, the, the role function has uh, minimum uh, energy, uh, just enough energy to get stuff done. So it's like uh, function is at a minimum for the solution of the corresponding task level energy consumption. Thus, it is able to regularly solve repetitive simple tasks. Okay, just enough to get by is uh, just enough energy for the role function. So in Jonathan's case, that would be SI. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, just enough energy for it. Uh, now the other, oh yes, it's also in the social adaptation block where um, people learn how to go into this mode when their primary mode doesn't work. And their primary mode is the social mission block. So the the lead function and the creative function is the social mission block. So for e, for ENFJ that would be FE with NE. And, and as Hannah mentioned in the previous hangout, and I've watched that recently, you mentioned uh, a teacher and how they can use NE. So the, sort of sort of like the com the combo of those two functions. Mm. Um, this, the, the theory here is if that doesn't work or if it's not appropriate, then they could you go into the social adaptation block. So it, so it would be, and this would be the case of when the ENT, when the ENFJ has to use, say, TE and SE. It's like they go into the, this block of less comfort, but they can get by with it. And so people learn. Ha people learn that they have to. Um, you know, they have to go outside their comfort zone, as it were, outside of their top two functions in Model G, which is the social mission block. Um, now we'll, I'll talk about the what's actually in the square. Um, right, and the key thing here is with experience this function gets better. And Victor gave the example in the, the Model G hangout of, oh, it's there, number one. Um, the function that is trained the way an athlete is trained by a coach or an actor is rehearsing his part, hence the usual name, uh, role function. So it's almost like it's not a natural thing, but it's something that people can go into. Um, so I'll, 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 just as a digression, uh, as a, to illustrate that, uh, Jonathan, uh, do you feel that um, doing SI type things is 
you almost have to like get your head straight in order to do it, like go into a different mode that's not quite natural, but you can get by and do it. You mean like routine stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Oh, I keep on being told to. Do you need to get in a routine? Do a routine? No, no, no. no. That's, that's poison to me. Right. I, it's very, I need my. I need a certain amount of erraticness. Errat- erratical. Whatever the word is for erratic. <laughs> <laughs> variation. Variation, that's a good one. It's a variation. I can't. Though I've been too predictable when it comes to certain tasks or repetitive tasks, they can be very mind numbing. What's really mind numbing? Right, so what we'll do is we'll just have a, a slight digression. This will only be a couple of minutes, but this is given an example of the position. Uh, and that is if we go to the INFJ info, because the reason why I'm doing this, folks, is that um, Jonathan is an II and an IFX. And uh, and Hannah's probably an ENTJ, and we've not got the ENTJ profile, but we can give the example of what the role function looks like in someone who's uh, that type. So I've got about a hundred, about two hundred slides in here now. So trying to find them. Right. So I need N for NI. The hunt is on. This is it. Right. So. Because again, because I'm just doing this, folks, to explain the role function. So we can just quickly go through these five for Jonathan, <coughs> and to sort of like get this idea of it's something that is a ch- bit of a chore, a role, a part that has to be played. That's the thing. Hmm. Um. I I know how to dress. <laughs> I would, I would do, you wear, I, do you wear a cape? Do you wear a cape? <laughs> I wouldn't mind wearing a cape if it was appropriate. If it was a certain situation, I wouldn't mind. I would. I can imagine wearing a cape. You know my regal fantasies. Uh, I know how to dress elegantly. I don't necessarily do it that much. Much in general, I dress for comfort uh, and I dress kind of poorly. But uh, I certainly know how to dress better if I had you know time and money and so on. Uh, I've seen. Or if you're going to a certain occasion, you know how to dress for it. Yes, in fact, I'm going to a wedding this weekend and I know how to dress for that. Uh, right, and so you, you, you're going to be better dressed than, say, an ENTP. It'd end up looking like Boris Johnson. Hmm, perhaps, yeah. Who looks it looks like he's never come across a comb in his life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know... I actually have... I think I know... I think Lady I and FG are a bit better with the... Unique touch thing. In my experience, they're maybe more creative with the dress. But I can be, I just. In general, I. That sounded, in that sounded nice as, to me. In general, as my mother said, I dress like a mink. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I know how to do it. Uh, often complains of poor health and discomfort. Sometimes. So, come up, Lord. Uh, but we'll push yourself. Yeah, well, I agree that I'll push myself to the usual routine work, no matter how I feel. I won't say I complain that often. Uh, but I agree with the pushing part. Bottom to the screen. Oh, it's gone a bit, a bit dodgy. Sorry. Uh, I, I thought I had something open that I shouldn't have. In terms of a web browser, but I'm, I'm I think I'm okay. Brings to his relationship of practical care and concern with the other male and convert. Uh, I suppose, like, well, if I notice this sort of thing, if I'm worried, I'll probably say it. I don't say it's a huge thing, but uh, that's the, that, this is the point. So. It's, so for the audience, this is like, this is the point of the role function that it is something that can be done, but there's a mm. sort of a minimum level of energy for it. You're not completely useless at this. Thing. It's more, like, it's more like I'm preoccupied with other stuff in my mind and the, the yeah. awesome old thoughts. Yeah, something. Uh, yep. I think I know some. 
quite a few INFJs or IDEIs. And well, would you say that they might be more prone to alternative kind of health things? Or because they, they, it mentions this striving for harmony of body and spirit and mm -hmm. you know this uh, nutrition, health and comfort. So I've noticed there can be <laughs> some tendencies to don't know if we're, I don't know if we're necessarily more prone to it than other types. I think uh, I've seen various types interested in that sort of thing made up. Uh, it's the sort of thing I would look at and be kind of open to, but not necessarily try in my case. It's like I'm not averse to it, I don't have immediate prejudice against it or anything, but uh, at the same time, Cautious and probably not too inclined to do it. I could, I do agree with the striving for harmony of body and spirit, though. Not necessarily in the sense of seeking alternate medicines, but in the sense of trying to be, of trying, of trying to be and liking to be, in a sound body, a sound spirit, sound mind. Whether I actually do that, whether I have the energy for that, is another story. But mm. uh, I agree with the striving for it. Given time can adjust a wide variety of living conditions, I would say so, yes. I like my... I do enjoy a certain amount of comfort, but I can put up with quite a lot, I think. Yeah, I mean, the way you described it there, Hannah, to me it sounded like an NF thing. Yeah. Hmm. Very much so. So, uh, that's it. Uh, I actually think a lot of SFs would be more... I think a lot of SS might be interested in alternate medicines and alternate lifestyles and that sort of thing as well. Like, uh, as my sort of opinion experience, like maybe it's their tertiary or inferior intuition playing up. I've seen, uh, well, I, I would say I've, I've seen a lot of this with NFs. Hmm. Uh, this holistic health. I mean, not in a negative yeah. one, uh, but. Uh, it can go, if it goes extreme, then it can go negative, but I mean, they strive for this holistic understanding yeah. of, and want to make subjective choices what comes to their health. Sometimes they, yeah, I think they make bad choices, <laughs> but that's, oh, well, and they can be more critical towards hmm. uh, Western medicine. Mm. Some, uh, yeah. At least, and, and yeah, so that's what there's I think. There's probably trends and correlations, but I, don't, I think it, does yeah, come down to the per yeah. comes down more to the person in a lot of ways. This sort of thing. Hmm. I've seen some people I would who are either NFs or I would type as NFs are going to be very skeptical and very critical of that sort of thing as well. So, but I'm thinking if uh, so, if INTJs or uh, ILIs have the same role function as I, right? So, yeah. how would it show up in them? Well. Okay, I, I think, as luck would have it, I have the profile open. But it's in mangled English. So I, I, will, I, will, I won't read it out, cause, but I will sort of change it. Okay. Um, over time, uh, they develop... Um, so I'm sort of like getting it into better English. They sort of get it... Uh, they develop sustainable habits... In, uh, in terms of comfort and health. Mm -hmm. um, they, at home, they will surround themselves with a large number of favourite things and products. Mm -hmm. um, it's put here, when they go, uh, when they leave home or go on a journey, um, uh, they will pick things that sort of provide the minimal necessary uh, facilities that they need. Uh, they, uh, they do they do perform hygiene. They try to observe cleanliness. Uh, they avoid colds and infectious diseases uh, because the idea is that their role SI minus and SI minus is about trying to minimize discomfort rather than maximize comfort. So there's an emphasis in SI minus towards uh, avoiding ill health. Mm. And so, um, 
got here. Uh, they avoid colds and infectious diseases. Uh, they can be untidy. And, and then it just puts something, just, just that, just something thrown in. A passion for comfortable shoes. See, I would actually relate to that quite a lot of those things. But, mm. Mm, interesting. In my case, my passion for comfortable shoes stems from the fact that I have very small feet. <laughs> and I subject on them, so I need comfortable shoes, but that's another thing. But right. I suppose I relate to both the INFG and I and TG mm. in size. Just, right. Mm. Could I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking. Could INTJs be a, have a little bit of this germ phobia? You know, uh, yeah. Being, uh, yeah. Afraid of germs. Yeah, that's the SI minus then. Mm. Does Does INFP have SI plus or SI minus? Uh, INFP has SI minus. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not thinking of anyone in particular. <laughs> Oh, no, oh, I no, know. No, Han, not Hannah. I'm thinking of someone. Oh, I'm not INFP, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking of anyone in my life. Anyone, <laughs> no member of my family at all. Except that when someone is like SI minus launcher, like the INFP is, they get um, activated when they see ill health in other people mm -hmm. and uh, someone suffering. Mm -hmm. It sort of stimulates them into the humanist role. It's what gets them. It's their starter motor. Um, it's also called the trigger function, the launcher. Hmm. Um, what we got now? So, so, we, so the idea, the audience will get the idea that this is something that people get buying, and from the example of Jonathan. So, uh, Hannah, just to is eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock your time. The cutoff point. Uh, well, yeah, because uh, I'm in our bedroom. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah, unfortunately. So. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, you have the husband banging at the door. Right, okay. <laughs> no, drumming at the door. Because he'd want to like, get his uh, creativity out there and play the drums on the door. Um, uh, so this is uh, bullet point number two. Um, uh, and once we've gone through these, then I'll go to the actual TE bullet points. And then I'll go to Victor's definition of TE, and then we'll look at Dario's definition of TE, and some little things from the book. Mm -hmm. Try and get that. Um, I'm now in the habit of looking at the clock. Right. Um, so, uh, just like an athlete needs to keep training uh, to maintain muscle mass, so the person needs to keep training this function or it will lose effectiveness. E.g., No, I'll put that in. <laughs> I'll put that in. That's, that's my own interpretation. The EG, LII needs to keep monitoring their own behaviour to stop going into bad habits such as interrupting. Um, do you think that's true, Hannah? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> do you interrupt? I, I interrupt quite a bit, so I, I don't... I'm very... Uh, how do you say? Accepting, accepting with this, <laughs> this kind of behavior. Uh, I tolerate it. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's <laughs> I tolerate it. Um, I know, I understand that you can't help it. <laughs> oh, I remember something interesting. Jack, Jack Aaron is very good at talking about FI. And now he's not the best at it because he once talked about he doesn't know when to enter a conversation because he said he couldn't judge the gap when to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm getting better at that with hangouts and finding judging the gap when to I, speak and being patient. I think what I'm seeing right there. <laughs> when I I think what I find with NP types is it helps if they've got uh, a pen and paper on hand when they're in this sort of thing where uh, if yes. they need to say something, you, know, you can just instead of write it down fast. Yeah, that's what I do. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. In, in a dual relationship, the INTP's role FI is trained by the ESFJ's uh, mm -hmm. control 
FI. Right, so this is paired with the control function. Now, this is the tote model equivalent the exit phase. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tote model on screen for about five seconds, and then people can pause it and look at it. We've not got time to look through that. Uh, uh, and it's a bit boring anyway. Uh, right, tote model. Right, T. It's going to be around here somewhere. Maybe towards the end. So is this always uh, is the this row function always a minus? No, I mean is this? No, 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 no. It, no. it, it can change. It, okay. No, because it's plus it's plus for INFJ and minus for integer. For example. No, it's it's always it's always going to be it's always going to be plus for left spinning type. Yeah, but I don't remember which <laughs> which is left spinning and what. Okay, the less spin the, yeah the, right the left spinning types are. Um, well, if you re if well, it depends on well you know model A and you know the supervision rings. No, well I don't remember. Yeah. That either. Okay, I'll, I'll give you I'll, I'll I'll give you the less spinning types. You, you know which types are in the quadrants, don't you? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you think of the alpha, if you visualize the alpha quadra, ESFJ and INTP are the less spinning types. Mm -hmm. And ENTP and ISFJ are the right spinning type. Then, if you visualize the beta quadra, INFJ and ESTP are the less spinners. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just concentrate on the less spinners. And in the gamma quadra, the less spinners are ENTJ and ISFP. Mm -hmm. And the less spinners in the delta quadra are ENFP and ISTJ. Okay. Right. So you just you just need to remember four dual pairings. Yeah, but right. what's uh, Oh yeah, let's not yeah let's not go into the logic of this. But yeah. Yeah 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 okay, right. Uh, I'm gonna pause that. I'm gonna put this on screen for right, folks. So if you wanna um, pause that and uh, understand what's going on, that's fair enough. And then I'll put the uh, the next one on. Uh, pause that. Understand what's going on. But we've not got time to go through that, uh, and we're going to go to just a little bit in the explanation about um, model, 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 model. What's this? Which one is this? Is that that's probably going to be an I? Then we've got to go up here, and then that's the explanation. All right. Right. So. I'll get to the bullet points soon. So the control function, because these two work together, the role function and the control function. So for instance, uh, the idea here would be, okay, we'll go with, if Hannah's, say we're going with Hannah being in the NFG. Uh, this is going to be role TE and uh, the ENFJ's dual is ISTP and their control function is TE. And the idea would be that they'd be able to coach you. So I'll go, I'll say what the code Because the control function has a lot of information. So uh, we won't spend too long on this because this is a, the control function hangout. But uh, they do work together. Right. Uh, the coach whose function it is to drill others rather than perform by himself. It is commonly referred to as the control function. It keeps monitoring the surroundings. Uh, right. Uh, least energy, but biggest information. Uh, the actions for which the person is closely monitoring, it is very sensitive about it. The type thinks a lot. So the idea is that uh, the ISTP has a lot of information for, t for TE type things, and they can train up the ENFJ uh, naturally in a way. Uh, so we won't go too much into that because we'll go into that when we do function eight. Uh, we, if we do uh, right, it's just there's a pairing there which we, we will explore more in future. So uh, needs to be trained up all the while. Uh, minimal energy for it. it's a bit of a chore. People can get by get by with it. Any questions? Nope. Okay. 
Now we're going to go to, I'm going to go for, find the ENFJ profile and we'll do the bullet points. I don't think that's the right one. It might be the right one. I'm not sure. Which one's that? Might be. It might be the right one. It's not come up yet. Yes, it's the right one. No, it's not the right one. That's ISFP. Uh, FI. So FE. This should be the right one. Unless that's another FI type. No, this is it. Yes, this is it. Yes. So, uh, got there. Just to, uh, for a reminder, because I, I never remember this. So, uh, is it a supervision? What is the relation to someone? If, if I'm... What is, for, for instance, what is uh, ENTJ to ENFJ? Or ESTJ to ENFJ? What is the relationship? EST, ESTJ to ENFJ. Mm. Right, okay. I'm going to look at the... I'm looking at the ENFJs... Um, right, Did okay, okay. Did I say ESTG or ENTG? Uh, well, either. But I'm just thinking, uh, what is the ENFJ's uh, relationship to okay. what you need? Okay, we've got, we've got ENFJ here. And you're mm -hmm. looking for, is it ESTJ that you're looking for? Or ENTJ, TE lead. Right, right. ESTJ is going to be like super ego. ISTJ is going to be conflictor. Yeah, but, so. yeah, but ENTJ. Uh, oh, you want to know ENTJ? Okay, so we're that's, looking for. Yeah, I mean, how do you call these relationships? Oh, that's oh, role? that's called the business relationship, mm -hmm. where the second function is the same. Uh -huh. So, for instance, in my case, the business relationship is with um, INFP. So it's mm -hmm. square three to square two, and so that will give the business relationship between. It. So it sort of means that ENFJ and ENTJ. Are on an equal footing because mm -hmm. there's sort of sort of equals because they also have the same like interaction style I think mm -hmm. as well. But your anyway, sound, your sound is lagging somehow. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> but your your mouth is moving either before or after you speak. I don't know which. Yeah, well, as long as I can be heard. Um, <laughs> Now, Hannah, you're the one that's put the hard time limit on me, and you're the one that's causing the digression. So, you know, maybe we'll need, what is it, injury time in football? You know, where they like, put those extra minutes on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, right, and then we'll go into... Oh, this is cool. So we've got about 27 minutes left, but we should get these seven done. Don't worry, I will, I will tell. Just find the... <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, just to let people know. Uh, oh, I just remembered something. I've not got it on screen. That would have been terrible. Um, so always remind me if I'm like talking about something and you're thinking, Ben, there should be a graphic. Always say, Ben, where's the graphic? <laughs> we should be seeing something. Right. So um, I'll just remind people. Ben, where's the graphic? Yeah, there it is. No. <laughs> There's you. Uh, I hope. Fish. Can you see it? I can see it. I can't see it. I can. Let me. You know, I'll click and click. Okay, now I can see it. Right, okay, okay, good. The MacBook works. Uh, MacBook Pro. Just for all the thieves out there. Um, right. Um, no, no, no. Uh, Scotland is a bit general. Um, I think I can't remember who translated this. Uh, Ian, I think Maria did this. Yes. Oh, yes. So the bits in italics, those purple italics, Maria added those. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so the first one. Uh, for those people watching this, oh, they might, they might have downloaded like an MP3 or something or like, got it on their phone and quite, can't quite read it. I'll say this and then Hannah can... Uh, uh, when involved in what he sees as on a promising project, may forget to eat and rest. <laughs> hmm. Uh, sometimes it can happen, but usually I'm, uh, I'm fairly um, routine. I mean, I'm I need to eat regularly, so I I rarely forget to eat. <laughs> uh, sometimes I can I can lack enough rest, but I can uh, I can sometimes have trouble 
prioritizing so that I mean I can get involved in some interesting project that that takes too much time from other things in my life. But not eating or resting always. Other other things too. Right. Just checking the uh checking the coolers on. Very good. Um I'm gonna have to put extra. I'm gonna put the big fan on. I'm gonna have to put the big fan on. Try and get. They quickly get into a situation where I can't actually do hangouts in in the proper summer. Let's get the fan on. Get right. some more coolness. It's getting ridiculous. I'll probably get a new computer towards the end of the year. All uh, right. Get about four cores. Right. Um. When I saw that number one, I thought, hang on a minute, that sounds a bit like Socionics SI. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, oh, it says there, uh, as, as other types of the same, as with other types of the same temperament, so EJs, often satisfied with just four to five hours of sleep, as long as he can sleep in on weekends. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't like to have that little sleep. Uh, it will affect my uh, my health and mood. <laughs> but sometimes they did that to me. Um, but sometimes <laughs> today. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, because someone wanted to talk to me about raining dichotomies and uh, and the mathematics of it. And when I've had less than five hours sleep, that's a challenge. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, it can be a challenge. But uh, yeah. I wouldn't say this is very typical for me. Even so I mean, Jonathan, mm. Okay. Uh Jonathan, have you observed any of this? I don't know how close the EX have experience of uh, ENFJs. I don't really have that much I, I was in a hangout last night where I had one sing for me. That was strange. <laughs> but uh, but other than that I don't really know I've been in hangout with the EFFJs, that's the extent of it. I probably I imagine some people I've met in my life are ENFJs, but I don't know. I can't think of any in my family or anything like that, or my circle or whatever. Or lack like thereof, circle. Uh, so I can't really call in on that. Right. I think, I think with the third one, we'll be able to get a, a meaty answer from Hannah. Uh, he is able to get significant results with regards to a specific process that loses his motivation soon when success is achieved. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that can happen. And happens. <coughs> but I can lose motivation even before I have <laughs> succeeded anything. So. Um. I mean, <coughs> yeah, just say what you wanted to say. I, I, I just think that, yeah, that, that might be an EJ trait, that. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I mean, I know that uh, I like to work on small scale pro projects more, so that the time span, span won't be too uh, wide. If there is it becomes too vague and too, uh, I mean, I need to, the point is, I need to have some results uh, every so often, you know, but uh, if I don't get any results, I will lose interest. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, what about number four? We'll tackle difficult problems, yet feels crushed by failure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. Who enjoys failure? <laughs> I don't know anyone who enjoys it. Or who doesn't feel crushed. But is I can sometimes tough tackle tough. difficult problems, yeah. Is it too tough to talk about? Tough? No. Uh, no. Uh, what do you mean? I don't know. Well, that's, it depends if you want to talk about it or not. Like, because it said, oh, I, uh, I'm crushed. Ben, I'm crushed by failure. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't have any any uh, specific failure I'm thinking of, but I mean. Right. Well, that's good because that means you've not you've not got it living with you. 
all the while. Yeah, I think four and five just sound very general. Uh, I, mm. I can't. I would say most people would. Yeah, I think these be. are quite general. Yeah, general. More. Yeah. Uh, Enjoys overcoming obstacles. I'm uh, definitely... I don't. I'd rather the obstacles not be there. Ah, I can enjoy overcoming obstacles. I feel it gives me a sense of power in a way, you know, that I I can handle things. Mm. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. That might be an SE thing, like the types yeah, that value yeah. SE might like that. Yeah. Or even those type, or say ESAJ that technically doesn't value SE, but is like good at it. Mm. Uh, but I'm sure that they would rather have things smooth running yeah. than not have uh, obstacles. Oh, here it is. this one might be relevant. Successful in management positions, provided he has the necessary persistence. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know if, if I'm successful. But I, I will. I can easily end up in these uh, positions because people think that I, I can do it. <laughs> I think, I, of course, it's, it can be flattering if people think that I can manage, you know, the leadership kind of positions. But, but I'm not always interested in those. Those kind of yeah. I need to have motivation for sure. Right, what, what about number seven? That's true, that's different. Yeah. I hate to be watched while I'm working. It will considerably make, uh, <coughs> like, uh, make my, my performance worse. Ah. I really don't like being watched. Or micromanaged, I, I don't like. Ah. Jonathan, is that an E6 trait, number seven? I don't like being watched while work either, though, so lots of people do. Lots of people don't, so it's more of a. I would imagine this is more of a tolerance for being watched, unless you're. Some E6s probably wouldn't mind being watched if it's a sense of. Uh, some. Maybe a self preservation six in the certain situations. I don't think it's necessarily an E6 trait. Uh, I'm trying to think what kind of person would enjoy being. Yeah, I was thinking maybe think about what? all. ESFP! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if they're, they're doing something that they, they are good at, that they are confident in, they are going oh, yeah, to want to do an audience. Yeah. Yeah, but that makes me think of like being overly supervised or something. Yeah, I suppose it's just ah, okay. it seems it seems more like ENFJs just have a very low tolerance for that sort of thing. Mm. Right. And um, I guess I'll agree with that too. Right, mm. so let's have a look at my uh, my clipboard. Uh, what we got here? We've got uh, right. Done the bullet points. Now if we go to Victor's charges. Because uh, Victor did some charges for uh, now, uh, nothing was mentioned on there. Oh wait a minute, VG on TE. Uh, oh yeah, this is the uh, this is what I put there for. Um, <laughs> if we consider the example of LII, uh, they may know a lot about business logic, but they're not very enterprising by nature. Oh. And then I put. Uh, my ears are burning. Um, right, uh, but anyway, getting back on track. I don't think I mentioned. Don't think T was mentioned there. As we concentrate on. Right, T E. Here we go. Right. I wonder which one fits Hannah more. T E plus or T E minus. is the business <laughs> um. oh, just, uh, 
also want civility and stuff. Hmm. I don't like to either. Hmm. But if I had to, I mean, if I was, uh, well, this, even thinking about this kind of thing as business logic, it would require that I really believed in my product. So if I really believed in my product, then I might hmm. be able to do uh, either of these. But, um, oh. Uh, that's one of the things Murr says, is that the higher uh, a function is up someone's stack, the more they're able to do both kinds of it, both uh, charges. Yeah. So, for instance, uh, ENFJ is not all negative emotions. They can do F FE plus as well as FE minus. So I mean I mean T U plus is more speculative and T U minus is more uh, conservative, more S J ish, I suppose. I think that is a bit stereotypical yeah. ENTJ description, like, you know, the greedy businessman sort of person or mm. uh, might depend on the individual. Mm, so do yeah. we have any do we have any examples of ENTJs uh, that are not in the business? Oh, oh Dennis, Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller. Oh, Ted Cruz is an ENTJ. Well, he was into businesses. Adele. Uh, well, was a lawyer. Adele, apparently. According to this website, Adele. Mm. <laughs> also, uh, it's also this child you said on, and I think she's actually. A type six. So. Who who is type six? Chow, Chow is still on. I think she's a type six. Oh. She's Ted is an uh, ENTJ. Ah, uh, the best. Yeah, um, I've got some information about her. So yes, yeah, she's from South Africa. She learned how mm -hmm. to speak in an American accent and stuck with it. Mhm. Mm and uh, she did a film called Monster. I think it was. Yes. Where she played Eileen, where Eileen was, and it was a very good performance. Oscar winning performance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most most of them are stereotypically most of them into business or politics or uh, things like that. Uh, is he a Bernie Sanders in the oh. NTG? But maybe not me. Blimey. Give well, him a bad name. He's ENTJ. Well, it says it says here's ENTJ. Me or me not be. Mm. So he's he has, even if he is, he's a little bit atypical for an ENTJ. Uh, just a bit. Just just a bit. Uh, apart, apparently, he has quite more ENTJ ish behind the scenes when he's uh, mm. running his campaign. Uh, his office and so on, like quite mm. stereotypically bossy and demanding, and want everyone to work hard, so on. Um, so, uh, Hannah, which one are you going to pull the lever on? T plus or T minus? I guess T plus would be more. But I don't really. I uh, quite honestly, I don't relate to either of these, so. <laughs> Yeah, it might be a bit too specific. I mean, because the way Dario views it, uh, got here. I think we've got to the TE regions. Uh, TE types are good at these things. Now, I will remind people that all of these things here, where it says everything that's in the text, other neuroscientists agree with. Like they know that this part of the brain is here, voice tone, yeah. way intense. If you go on Wikipedia, look at the temporal lobe, it's about sound. They, people know that the back of the brain is about the occipital lobe, is uh, the home of the visual cortex. Yeah. You know, it's agreed upon that you've got higher function in the, in the prefrontal cortex. So it's just, and this color coding is based on things that Dario wrote in the chapters. 
mm. uh, where he said that something like um, uh, types with the MBTI code INFP are more active in these purple regions. Uh, SJs have more activity in region T5. Yeah, it's more as on average because there are individuals with the same type of yes variations, but in general. One, yeah, one thing that's also consistent. right-handers as well. Yeah, if you left, if you left handed, it can screw me up. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half the time it goes away, yeah. away. and for a long time, Dario was Dario was had a no lefties rule, and then mm. he started to admit them in. Right. Uh, uh, another thing that came up was that uh, the perceivers, the dominant perceivers, so the the IJs and the EPs, they were more active in the right side of the brain, which is where admitting novelty, that's what it says, whereas the EJs and IPs, the dominant judges, were always almost always active, more active in the left side of the brain, which is about decision-making, about judgment. So that's an interesting consistency. Oh, was that in the, uh, the DCNH in the, hangout? No, that was in the Google link, or I noticed it. I don't know if it was in a book or in a slide. I think it was in the book, and, and he also said, yeah. I don't remember, was it in a hangout or in uh, in some uh, lecture I saw, he said that usually, I mean, often extroverts have more activity in the front area and introverts. Uh, no, was yeah. it introverts in the back area? Or mm. other way around. Anyway, so that extra, extroverts yeah. and introverts can show up in the... Yeah. I think I think right. um, I think extroverted thinking in particular seems to use decision part making part yeah. of the yes. brain here. Yeah. Uh, extroverted thinking, I think you still say with a couple of random points over the brain, with this one being the main, mm. the main thing. Extroverted right. thinking can be quite lazy, in the sense because it's like, in the sense of uh, it's very hard working the outside. Uh, but it's because it's taking certain logical things for granted in order to get things done. Whereas introverted thinking is quite lazy in the outside, but it's thinking things over perhaps too much. Well, it's general. Um, so we've got this. We've got we've got we've got a couple of slides to get through with the functions, and then we can do some stuff on eight keys to self leadership on TA. We've got about seven minutes left. Uh, so, uh, what, what do you think of that definition of TA, Hannah? Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, this is, I think, mm. this is a bit better than the bit, the mm -hmm. this logic. There's this, uh, you, know, I mean, you can think of this in, in many contexts, not only business. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I do make decisions object based on evidence. I'm, I've, well, I've said this several times, but I'm an empiric, empiricist mm. uh, to the core, so. Check whether things function properly well, I don't know about that. And in terms of valuing, um, do you value TE more than TI? Uh, well, this, is, this, was, this has been a tricky thing, because I think I value both TE and TI. Uh, yeah, I think I value them both, but I, I think I'm, I might be a bit better in TE, even though I've at some point I wanted to be good at TI, but then the more I know mm. TI leads, <laughs> the more I, I've learned that I'm not as good in TI that I would not be, so mm. I have accepted my, <laughs> my uh, failure in this. But, like, um, if you're INTJ, that would be like the control function. Mm -hmm. uh, TI, so it might be something like you think about a lot, you don't have much. Um, I don't know what it would be, I don't know what, how it, what the energy aspect of that would look like. Uh, well, if I think, okay, without without even thinking what my type is, but if I think where, when do I use TI? Like what is the situation that somehow triggers it? It's usually if there is a conflict or some kind of argument, debate going mm -hmm. on, then I will you know, use this TI most. So I will check the accuracy and of the arguments and 
mm. and uh, try to look at the argumentation in, from different angles. You know, that's when I use it. But I need to have some kind of motivation. I, 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 I get really tired if I just have to use that, like in philosophy. If I just have to use it because you know, it's, mm. it's the general method. I need to have a pragmatic goal, goal for it. Right. Uh, so we've got um, uh, again. This is uh, this is his findings on, on uh, TE. Mm. Uh. May display. Yeah, that, I, I think it's funny. This may display confidence even when we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's gonna happen. Uh, I think I'm a bit. I admit that I'm a bit uh, mm, confused with when I'm trying to think SE in socionics and TE in MBTI because I think there are some similarity in TE and yeah. you know, and especially this in MBTI or in this Nardi's work, TE is somehow the function that takes action under stress. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that makes quick decisions and, and works really efficiently under pressure. Whereas in socionics, I'm sort of seeing this more under SD. That is the best under SD. Um, yeah. but, uh, but again, SE in socionics is about power uh, or resisting mm -hmm. power. And uh, TE is about uh, doing things in the most uh, resourceful way, sort of bottom line thinking. Mm -hmm. And it is more um, adaptable than, uh, say, SI, which is more um, procedural. Uh, well, I, I didn't quite uh, take in what you said. Where did you say the confusion lay? The C and T. Oh well, okay. I'm using myself as an example because I I know that what I can what I can do under stress if there is. I can, I can make quick decisions under stress. If there is a stressful situation, someone has to act. I will be the one who acts and take takes action. You know, and I can be quite a, if a, resourceful and effective in those kind of situations. Funny, okay, I'll take an example. Uh, my son, my younger son, was uh, oh, uh, visiting overnight uh, at his friend, and it was uh, this weekend, on Friday and Saturday night. And at uh, 3.30 a.m., my phone rang. So he was calling, you know, from his friend. It's in the middle of the night, and he's scared. He can't sleep. I thought, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> what can I do? You know, what can we do? My husband uh, woke up, too. I mean, he actually answered the phone, and then I told him, too. So what can you do? You know, they are <laughs> he's sleeping in a, you know, in a different place, and he's scared. He's crying. He's scared. But he's too here to wake up their parents and or his friend and then I'm thinking of it, what can we do? And then I realize you know, it comes to me that let's let's put a one C D on that he likes to listen to uh, it's a story, like a audio book mm -hmm. that he likes to listen to. So let's put it on. Let's uh, he can call us a WhatsApp uh, WhatsApp call that is free and then I will put the C D on the computer and he will listen to it. And that works. So he listened to this CD via the WhatsApp, WhatsApp uh, call, and then uh, he fell asleep. So. I like the tea there, where you did it for the. the oh, oh, I'll just put it on the cheapest method where it's free. So how did you get it free again? Advice for parents out there. Did you use oh, Skype? Did you say or how did you get it free again? You said you did something WhatsApp. and then the call. How did you make the call free? It, well, you know this WhatsApp, this uh, application, WhatsApp. WhatsApp. No. You, use you don't use it. Mm. No. It well, it's it's this, um, well, it's like a messenger, but it's, mm. it's an app. Well, yeah, it's an application on the phone that you yeah. know you have these groups and discussions. I mean, even like a chat board, you know, for mm. and, and you can make calls. It's like Skype or Messenger that as you can make free calls. <laughs> so he has the WhatsApp in his phone. So. Oh, he is, yeah. so that's good. Free. Right. So, uh, yeah, but, yeah, just an, as an example, that you only have to make a quick decision to do something <laughs> under 
pressure with very limited options. So I can do that. So Hannah, when you did Dario's uh, keys to ignition test, I think you did it. Did you do it with me? I think you did. You did it at the I same think, time. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm taking it like probably like 50 times. <laughs> I always get INFP from that. Sometimes I've got an INTJ, but usually INFP. Mm. It's because the FI questions are so tempting <laughs> in that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I scored quite highly on uh, FI. Um, so we've got, we've got some T. So measuring and constructing progress. We're now into overtime, folks. Uh, be more efficient with time and resources. Improve your ability to solve life's many problems, life's many problems in a practical, logical manner. Stay objective when implementing difficult decisions. Convince others with easy-to-follow reasoning. Uh, and then there's like uh, I'll just go through some of these. Actually, I don't know if I can. Oh, oh. people won't be right. Just do it. <laughs> Usually know the time and what point you're at in a process. Uh, determine success by measurement or other objective method such as time taken. Uh, follow a straight line of reasoning. Uh, stick to making decisions based on impersonal measures such as points earned. Uh, the reason why Dario mentioned that is that he's a, a lecturer and he marks work. Although, in my opinion, the person that's teaching shouldn't be the person who's also marking. Mm -hmm. Because it can well, be a lot of the time, interest there. A lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the time they make sure that they're anonymous. Like they know who, I guess, a, there'll be a number or something, yeah. but they won't necessarily know who his work is in marking. Sometimes. No. Yeah, but my point, no. But my point, though, is I think I th I think it should be outside that the people who mark the students shouldn't be the same as a teacher because. Um, well, if we talk about if it's just tests or something, then it doesn't matter. Or or some days you'll have assistants like uh, yeah teaching assistants who do it as well. Uh, yeah. For big for exams, yeah, for actual that's... exams, it will probably be outside people. Oh, yeah, they have uh, outside yeah. invigilators and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, um, what I want to get on to is, I'll just read through these. Uh, conceive a comprehensive plan to maximize progress towards goals, mobilize resources, and supervise implementation of a multi-part plan. That sounds very te Uh Construct an argument to convince someone using evidence clearly in front of you both. Oh, yeah. Uh, lay, uh, lay out steps for others to complete tasks in time and resource efficient ways. Um, Carl Jung put it best when you just put practical thinking. Mm. See you. Yeah. Right. And we can end the hangout by talking about um, how it's used in conjunction with FI. And this is actually quite good because I read this just before the hangouts. So it's just a couple of paragraphs and then we can end. And Hannah can have a sleep. Because uh, it's now oh, 11 but I don't, but I only need hey, four or five hours, right? <laughs> right. Um, so extroverted thinking. Uh, here we go. Uh, we can get impressive results using extroverted thinking in tandem with introverted feeling. We might sequence and prioritize based on objective measures while following beliefs about what's important. If there isn't enough time in the day to do everything we want, we may select those things that matter most to us. Or perhaps, while trying to make a decision, we discover that the available evidence isn't enough to convince us one way or another. Until we get more evidence, we go with what we believe to be true. Being in touch with what we believe in motivates us to use willpower and to follow a procedure or task through to completion. We might structure an organization or system to be as fair as possible, honoring individual identities. So that's dual use when extroverted thinking is in the lead. Beautiful, that's beautiful. And then, 
Oh, you like that? That's all. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. She's Beamer. Right, mm. and then we have... Um, right, then we have when introverted feeling is in the lead. Uh, we have... Uh, we can get impressive results using introverted feeling in tandem with extroverted thinking. We can stay true to our beliefs by structuring our lives and standing firm with what's important. We might decide against purchasing a particular product that harms the environment and then arrange our lives for the organization we lead to make do without it. We... <laughs> She's connecting. We might refer to evidence and empirical reasoning to support what we believe is true. Maybe we hold fast to the idea that all people bring useful gifts to society, then construct a sorter or a metric and gather data to demonstrate this value. Or we might use time management and spatial organization skills to better follow through on important commitments and worthwhile projects. Well, I'd, I'll just say that there, there is go. no doubt that I value both TE and FI. I mean, seriously, this is <laughs> like uh, an ideal of mine. My life. Yes, so like I said, I mean, we can in future, because uh, with um, Jonathan, have you got NOP, Neuroscience of Personality? Yes. Yes. So, well, I heard that tone. Of course, Ben, I've told you before. Bad yes. memory there. <laughs> it's a leading more question. It's a, it's a leading question. <laughs> it's a leading question, Jonathan. If you buy this book, then we can do Hangouts with Hannah, where we uh, like cover a chapter. So in future we could do like the T E chapter in eight years of self leadership. You can buy it and, uh, uh, I, I bought it as an e book. Do we... You did I ah, because yes. it's a lot cheaper that way. It's cheaper. See, I tried yeah. to I tried to, I couldn't see it as an e book. It was recent. It's in Radiant House you can buy it. This is now I'm marketing yeah. <laughs> Dario's work, but it's under his uh, company, Radia Radiant what is it? Radiant House. Radiant. Something like that. Oh yeah, I mean, it cost me twenty-one dollars, seven dollars ninety-eight shipper. But it's even oh. cheaper. It's e cheaper as an ebook. Yeah, ebook is a lot cheaper. Yes, that sounds good. It's just that I, I, I want to have something physical to de to deface. And I'm looking forward to seeing Dario's oh. uh, <clears throat> new version of the uh, two point yeah. oh. Of the, the oh, I have some information. Dario is actually interested in Enneagram, and he's written an article on Enneagram and the um, the neuroscience connected with Enneagram types and the activity. But at the moment, it's appearing in a certain periodical, mm -hmm. and so that's why it isn't out there. Oh. So um, I'm sure in future the it, research will be out there. Mm. See, and, I... Uh, oh. uh, no. um. I'm already in sales. It just took me to a link to Amazon, which does not have Kindle. So you use magic. I oh, no, I I'll show it. I'll, I'll show it to you. Amazon does have Kindle. Sorry? Sorry? Amazon does have Kindle. Okay, I can't, I can't make you out, you're bringing up. I thought Amazon did have Kindle. No, Amazon has Kindle, but the option for Dario's book for Kindle isn't coming up. I go to Radiant's house and it just sends me to a link to Amazon, which only has it in paperback. I get other books on kin for Kindle from Amazon, but not his book. On either Amazon.com or Amazon. <laughs> Uh, it's it's thirteen fifty five uh, if you buy a PDF. I'll show you. Mm. Yes, it's. <laughs> I put it as. Can you see it? The link. See, uh, we can stop the hangout <laughs> if you want, then. Oh yes, yes. Okay, yes. So, so, this is behind the scenes of the climax of this hangout is. Well, I'm buying this book, Aki's self-leadership. Yeah. 
This is the suspended enigma to whether he buys it or not. Ooh. We'll find out and let it hang out. Yeah. Right, so Bye. Bye from me. Bye. <laughs> Bye from the 